In order to give you some context on how familiar I am with my topic tonight, I think it's important that I tell you a little bit about my story. So, I wasn't born here, but I like to tell people I got here as fast as I could. Uh, I uh, grew up here in Southern California. I had an entrepreneurial father and a school teacher mother, so my house looked a lot like business and reading. So I became what a lot of people refer to as a natural entrepreneur. We need to get my slides up, guys, because now my topic is getting even worse. Uh, so. As a natural entrepreneur, I was always starting businesses. When other kids were out playing, I was actually making time cards in my room for the factory I would have one day. <laughs> Needless to say, I didn't have a lot of friends, so I did that more and more. <laughs> By the time I got into junior high, I was running businesses in junior high. I almost got kicked out. Don't worry, I wasn't selling anything illegal. Uh, I always wanted to be in business, so at 16, I opened a window washing company. I had to sell it when I realized, or at least the insurance company realized, I wasn't old enough to sign the documentation for insurance. At 19, I started another company, and at 21, I sold it and moved across the country from California to Florida to do what was called an earnout. I made it eight months of a one-year earnout. I found myself on the other side of the country. I, was, I didn't have a job. I was underqualified. I was way too young to do what I was doing. I had dropped out of college to sell my company. I had no experience to speak of. So given no other options, I became a consultant. <laughs> and I don't just mean a consultant on LinkedIn. I really was a consultant. <laughs> we know that when you lose your job, you just change your title to consultant these days. I was a real one. I traveled the country internationally, nationally. I worked with Fortune 500 companies. I helped people put products into market. I loved being a consultant. The challenge with my job, my company, the business that I ran, was that I traveled 85% of the time. So I was home maybe three or four or five nights a week, or a month. And 10 years ago, I had a huge shift in my life. I met my now wife, Katie, and we started dating, and we decided we were going to build a life together. And she's a rather strong woman. Me checking in three or four nights a month was not going to cut it. <laughs> so we started looking at options. We decided to sell my consultancy. We lived in Florida at the time. We looked at what we were going to do next. One of the things I had always done is invest in real estate. My wife became a real estate agent. I became a mortgage broker. We started really doing a lot more in real estate. We went all in, all our time, effort, energy, all the money I got from selling the consultancy into Florida real estate in 2006. 2007 was awesome. <laughs> 2008 was not. Now I share this story with you to give you context on my topic that I know well. <laughs> stress. You know, isn't there so much made about stress in our society today? In 2007, my wife and I made one of the hardest decisions we had ever made. At least for me, it was incredibly difficult. See, I came from a long line of successful entrepreneurs and watching my entire fortune vanish in a matter of months, we decided to sit down with an attorney and my wife and I ended up going bankrupt. We lost everything. At the time, we were more than halfway to what we thought would be retirement. Needless to say, I was familiar with this topic. I ended up in a place where I didn't understand you could get. See, I had heard people say, I checked out, I disassociated, I just couldn't deal. I had never been there. I was always doing something. But at that point in time, I checked out. And I wish I could say it was for a day or two, but it was days. And I finally, at one point, called a friend of mine. I was looking for a shoulder to cry on. I called him and I told him what had happened. And I came clean. I told him about the lost equity, the lost money, losing our income, the fact that we couldn't pay our bills anymore. And even though it looked like everything was going great, our lives were falling apart. I really wanted a shoulder to cry on. And I remember exactly how I said it to Alan. I said, Alan, we looked at what we were doing. We've looked at our income. We realized we have no decisions, no options, and we're going bankrupt. And he said, I'd present it to you in a different way. You have options. You could go back to Mexico, go to California, pretend like nothing was happening, stick your head in the sand. You've made a decision. You're going bankrupt. Now own it and move forward. And I thought, what a jerk. <laughs> For just a minute. See, Alan 
help me change perception. See, when we think about stress today, do we think of stress as a positive? See, today, if I showed you this continuum of stress here, and then where would you want to be? How much stress would you want in your life? Would you rather be in the yellow on this slide or in the red? See, the challenge is, is the paradigm of stress sometimes can be overworked because if you're in the yellow over here, the higher the stress, the higher your productivity as well. Now we can get to the other side where we're burned out. But if you don't have enough stress in your life, your productivity actually goes down. Now I had a lot and I shifted perception. And the challenge that we have with stress today in our society is that isn't stress maybe overmarketed? I mean, how many of you, and be honest, know the person in your life that is so stressed out and so ready to tell you how stressed out they are that if they would just shut up and do what they needed to do, they would not have so much stress, right? <laughs> how many of us are in a place where we're so stressed, and we all know why. You can see the marketing, live a stress-free lifestyle. You shouldn't be stressed. Don't stress out so much. What type of person truly has no stress? A dead one. <laughs> See, the images of stress in our, our marketplace are weird, too. You know, I was doing research for this presentation, and I came across this one from the Mental Health Foundation, and they have this image to help you. It says, manage your stress with mindfulness. Here's the image they chose. I wasn't stressed until I found it. <laughs> the marketing around stress is impressive. This is from Lenovo. Or th this is Lenovo. It's a, a software company or a, a computer company, and they've created a computer that when Windows crashes, not if, but when Windows crashes, you push a button, it takes you back five minutes, and it fixes it, and the image they chose was this one. That is not less stress. What are they testing that guy for? 40% of the cables are running right under the desk. How many of you, like me, are old enough to have had a stress test? I just want to make sure. Okay, for those of you who don't have your hands up, you're lucky because the stress test is where you go to the doctor, they put you on a treadmill, they try to kill you, and if you live, you pass your stress test. <laughs> so Kaiser, out here in California, has a stress test that makes it easier. So they came up with an image of what a stress test should feel like. Now, I realize that's supposed to be a bonsai tree. But subliminally, men, are we seeing something completely different? <laughs> See, the challenge with stress <laughs> is that we make so much of it that perhaps what we really need to do is shift perception. See, what's been found on that chart that I showed you earlier is the less stress we have, the less productive we are. In fact, we see articles like this, the danger of stress. Shouldn't it really be the danger of perception because shifting perception so often changes exactly what's happening to us in my world when everything was falling apart I couldn't stop what was happening but that statement that Alan made to it you need to own it move forward what are you going to do next changed everything I needed that wake-up call I got up started working spoke with my wife and we decided to move things forward as fast as we possibly could and on a daily basis she made sure we kept the right perception by every night before we fell asleep we had to tell each other three things we were grateful for even though the world around us was falling apart that perceptual shift moved us forward because so often we can't change what's going on we can change our perception see when we go back to this chart and we think about what really is stress stress is variety change challenge promotion learning growing i'll prove it to you how many of you have children <laughs> are they stressful <laughs> how many of you would give them up there's usually one <laughs> The reality is stress is a positive. Stress moves us forward. When you go to the gym and you lift weights, you get stronger. What do you do when you get stronger? You add more weight. It would make sense that if our bodies react that way, so do our minds, so do we. See, when we go back to this chart and we really examine stress, when we're over on this side of the chart with less stress, we experience boredom, under-involvement, under-utilization, and it's barely then when we get to the top that we're stimulated. How many of you have been bored, underutilized, under-involved in a job? Is it stressful? I was. 
When I was 16, I decided I wanted to be around money because I wanted to be wealthy one day. I was a teller at World Savings in Mission Viejo. Can you imagine me as a teller aggressively waiting for somebody to make a deposit? I remember sitting there one day with absolutely nothing to do. I leaned over and said to the woman next to me, hey, what do we do when no one comes in? She said, that's the best part. We just sit here and wait. <laughs> I was over there. See, now there is a challenge when we get to this side because then we're distressed, exhausted. We have ill health and breakdown. We don't want to get there. But there's a magic place in the middle, right here, the area of the highest productivity, the highest production in between good stress and bad stress. That's where we want to be. It actually has a name. I didn't make this up. It's called eustress. And it's stress as a positive. E-U stress, not you stress. <laughs> See, eustress is the process of exploring potential gains. It's stress that's good for us. It's stress that moves us forward. And my question is, can't we have the perception that all stress can? The next time somebody runs up to you and says, I'm so stressed out, can't you say, good for you, you're about to learn something. <laughs> I tell you what, it's going to change something. Either they're going to move forward or they're going to stop telling you they're stressed out. <laughs> See, when we look at this chart and stress is a positive, when we look at you stress right there in the middle, now I ask you, where would you like to be? Probably right there. See, when I coach and consult, that's where we try and get people to. In our company, that's where we try and get our employees to. Right to that place of maximum productivity, maximum production, eustress. See, when we make this smaller, you can see that you might be in eustress for a while. This area of best performance and productivity, we get somebody to there. They're doing well. They're working well. They're in the blue. And then something happens. And they get over into the red. Maybe there's too much work. Maybe they have a, something that they're thinking about. Maybe there's a personal issue going on. And what we found in almost all cases is that if we can shift perception, we can bring that person right back into the blue without changing the environment or what's going on. Now, the effect of time and experience on stress is that it can move you back into the yellow. See, the challenge is is that if you've done something for a while, and you've worked at it for a while, and it's something that you're really, really proficient at, maybe it gets a little boring. Maybe you get so good at it that you're underutilized. You get over into the really, really underappreciated area. That's just as challenging as being stressed. See, when we look at stress, it actually causes growth. So I ask, are you putting the appropriate amount of stress on your life. One of my most interesting cases of stress causing growth comes from my life. Like so many things, it comes from a personal hero of mine. And like many personal heroes, I know mine personally. She's my younger sister, Michelle. She, uh, when we were kids, had a very difficult time. See, and that small curve, Michelle, when we were children, was a perfectionist. She got straight A's all through school. Well, not true. She got one B plus. She actually took my parents to school to have it corrected. <laughs> I remember watching and thinking, crap, I just want a B plus. <laughs> See, over time, that shifted. Those straight A's got Michelle into Stanford. Stanford took her to Harvard. Hartford took her to a medical residency. She now works in the emergency room at UCLA. On a daily basis, this perfectionist that would check out over a B plus makes decisions where people live or die. Because over time, she dealt with more and more and more stress in her life and adjusted to it and was able to make decisions today that most of us could never face because she applied the stress. And over time, what that looks like is that as you grow the ability to take on stress, it's, it's not linear. It's actually exponential. The stress that you can deal with here when you're young or you haven't pushed yourself or you just haven't been challenged enough is not linearly related to this one. See, as you grow, you can handle so much larger volume of stress. The question is, are we taking on enough? Are we pushing ourselves enough? Are we in the yellow? See, over time, when we go back to this ever-increasing you stress that we get, if we were to draw a line in between all of it, most people would call that a career line. 
See, I would call it something else. Your legacy line. In my life, I dealt with a tremendous amount of stress. I was lucky to have my perception shifted, and we were able to pull things together. That bankruptcy is in my mind like it happened yesterday. I remember the day at the order of the trustee that I had to take my wife's wedding ring off of her finger and drive it from pawn shop to pawn shop in South Florida to get a written estimate of a what will you buy it from me today price. That changes things. By the way, have any of you been in a pawn shop? Because the one on TV is nice. (laughs) (laughs) The perception shift that we had changed things for us. That business that we started ended up being the 21st fastest growing company in the United States in 2011. We created this career, this line. In my office today hangs a picture of Martin Luther King when he gave his I Have a Dream speech. And I look at that picture often and I think, could I have done that? Could I have taken on that level of stress, that level of arousal, that level of energy in my life? I don't know if I could, but I'm glad he did. And when we reflect back to stress and that line, that legacy line, see, if stress is a positive and stress makes us greater, I would present to you that the amount of stress that we are able to deal with in our lives is directly proportionate to the legacy that we leave. So the next time you're stressed out, perhaps instead of just being frustrated or scared or by its very nature, stress, you say, who gives a shift? (laughs) (laughs) And remember, you're building your legacy. Thank you.